Alright, Algebra students, this is Chapter 2, Section 8, where we're going to talk about literal equations and dimensional analysis. A literal equation, a literal equation, is an equation that has more than one variable. This is going to be very important when, when you get to chemistry class. So we're going to have more than one variable in our equation. That makes it a literal equation. Now here are the steps to solving a literal equation. You need to get the variable isolated on one side and all other terms and variables, you need to put those on the other side. So we're still solving equations just like we've been doing, but we're going to have more than one variable in our equation. All right, hint, when needed, use the distributive property. Remember, sometimes we have to undo the distributive property and use parentheses. Um, so keep that in the back of your mind when you run into uh, a situation where you need to isolate the variable. You have to sometimes undo the distributive property. All right, number two, then we're ready to solve. Once you've isolated the variable, you're ready to solve the equation. That's with literal equations. Now, dimensional analysis, it's also known as unit analysis. Again, this is used in chemistry a lot. It's using unit conversions where we have to convert our units of measure to change from one unit to another. So we'll do examples of both of these types of problems, dimensional and literal. So let's start with literal equations. It's a literal equation because I have a B and a C. I have more than one variable. And it says here solve for this specific variable and it's asking me to solve for B. So that means I need to isolate B. I'm going to recopy the problem. That's a good habit. To um, undo what's happening to B, I need to subtract 12C. Now we're used to writing it underneath the other term, but the problem here is 9 does not have a C. This is just 9. This is subtracting 12C. They are not like terms. Did you hear me? They are not like terms. I had a few people have trouble with this um, on that last test, so let's be careful. These are not like terms. So we're left here with a 5B and 9 minus 12 C, that's the best I can do on the right side of that equation. So now to undo what's happening to B, we need to divide both sides by 5. Now B equals, this is a fine answer, B equals 9 minus 12 C over 5, or if you prefer, you can say B equals 9 over 5 minus 12 over or 12C over 5. Um, personally, I prefer this answer, but if 5 was divisible into 9, then you need to realize you should simplify. So maybe you need to get in the habit of breaking them apart and simplifying if you can. Now, if 5 went into 12, but not into 9, then you have to still leave the 9 over 5. So be careful when you simplify uh, fractions that have a variable in them. So we'll keep practicing. Let's look at the next one. We're solving for y. So I have 2x minus 17y equals 13. Subtract 2x from both sides. Again here, it's not like terms. So I have negative 17y equals 13 minus 2x. Divide by negative 17 that's an equal sign, got erased, divided by negative 17. So you're either finished here because these cancel and y equals 13 minus 2x over a negative 17. You can make this your answer. Or y equals 13 over negative 17 minus 2x over negative 17. Now, I hope that bothers you to say minus a negative because those two negatives turn positive. So either leave it as one fraction or if you want to write it as two fractions, it'd be nice to erase that plus sign and have 
13 over negative 17 plus 2x over 17. All right, number three wants us to solve for a. Now, if, at any point, if I do something that confuses you, remember, you can always rewind the video and watch me do it again. So we've got to get a isolated on one side or the other. I'm going to subtract 2ab because I need my a's all on one side. And when I do this, I have, be careful, that's ab. That is not a like term, so I have 12a minus 2ab plus 3c on the left, and then I have 6 left on the right. So let's go ahead and take the 3c to the other side. They are not like terms, not like terms. I have 12a minus 2ab equals 6 minus 3c. It looks like I am not going to be able to solve for A, but I can if I remember the hint to undo the distributive property. So A can come out of there and have 12 minus 2B. Aha! Now I have A almost isolated if I divide both sides by 12 minus 2B, 12 minus 2B. That'll cancel and A equals 6 minus 3C over 12 minus 2B. And you cannot cancel your 6 and your 12. Be careful. Warning, warning right here. Watch out for trying to simplify. 12, um, 6 is no longer available to be canceled with 12. 6 is married to negative 3C and 12 is married to 2b. So this is your final answer. Okay, I'm gonna let you try number four. You are probably gonna need to undo the distributive property. I'll give you that hint since we have an x with a z and x with a three, and those are not like terms. So once you move your x's over, try that little trick right there where I pulled the a out of both and undid the distributive property. So that's for number four. I'll be checking that one tomorrow. Okay. All right, on the next page are some literal equations that have practical um, real life application. To figure out fuel economy, a car's fuel economy, we'll call that E, is how many miles per gallon the car gets. That's the formula E equals M over G, where M is the number of miles driven and G is the number of gallons of fuel. Solve this formula for M. Now that, I'm gonna rewrite the problem because as you see, my screen is jumping and I don't know what's the matter. Um, this is a proportion. E is understood over one, so I am allowed to use cross product here. And when I cross multiply, M times one is M, and I'm gonna have E times G. And again, I don't know why my screen is jumping. So there it is, I've solved for M. M equals E times G, where E stands for miles per gallon that the car will get. So that equation is gonna help me with the next question. Erica's car averages 30 miles per gallon. So that's E. E equals 30 miles per gallon. She used 9.5 gallons of gas. That's a G. She used 9.5. So it asks us how far did she drive? That's how many miles. So we're going to be solving for M. Since we already solved for M in this equation, it's a matter of plugging in in place of E. Well, let's in place of E, I'm going to plug in 30, and in place of G, I'm going to plug in 9.5. So when you do that multiplication, you'll find out how many miles she traveled. So that makes it 285 miles. That's how far. All right, I'm going to leave number three for you to work. It's using that same formula, but this time you're going to know how far she traveled, and you're going to know her... Um, 
mile economy, miles per gallon, you're going to be looking for G. How many gallons of fuel did she use? So I'm going to check that tomorrow to see that you were able to solve that equation. So our last example problem talks about dimensional analysis. There are, like all math problems, many ways to solve this problem. Um, so I'm going to show you the way I remember learning this in chemistry class. Uh, it's talking about the average weight of chimpanzees at a zoo. They weigh 52 kilograms. But in um, the United States, we don't usually talk about kilograms, we talk about pounds. So if we're trying to figure out how many pounds that chimpanzee weighs, we've got to do a conversion. So we're going to analyze the dimensions of our chimpanzee, dimensional analysis, doing a unit conversion. So one gram Thank goodness they tell us this. We didn't have to memorize this. One gram is about 0 .0353 ounces. So this is how we're going to use dimensional analysis. We are going to have to cancel kilograms, and we can convert kilograms to grams, and then we're going to have to convert grams to ounces, and then ultimately, if we want to know how many pounds, we have to convert ounces to pounds. So I know you did some of this in pre-algebra. So they told us it was 52 kilograms. There is a way um, I always used King Hector didn't barf drinking chocolate milk to help me remember that um, this is our base unit of measure and for this problem we're dealing with grams. So from kilo to go from kilo to grams, there's one, two, three, so that makes the three zeros. There's a thousand grams in one kilogram. So um, this is your biggest unit, so you'll need a lot of little units of measure to make one big unit. So it's a thousand grams in one kilogram. And then they gave us the ounces to grams. That's the one I don't have memorized. And then they even gave us that there's 16 ounces in a pound. So once you've canceled all your units and you have the unit you want, now we just go through. This is understood on top, uh, over 1. And you're going to multiply on your calculator. 52 times 1,000 times 0 .0353 times 1 and all of that divided by 16. So in the end, you should end up with 114.725 pounds. So our chimp here is about 115 pounds. So approximately 115 or 114.7 pounds. That's the weight of your chimp. So see how you set this up to be able to cancel your um, dimensions that you do not want and end up with the unit of measure that you do want. We will do more of these in class. Um, you might want to remember King Hector didn't barf, Kilo Hecta Deca base, then Desi Centi Milli drinking chocolate milk. Alright, don't monkey around. Come to class ready to get to work. Have a great day.